Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and honeygirlsworld.com. Today I'm coming to you guys with a special edition true crime video. I did state in my last and my first true crime video that my thought process and my plan was to do true crime videos for True Crime Tuesday. But this is going to be a special edition because the young man who I'll be talking about today, it's actually his birthday. Um, so, you know, I wanted to do this special edition video for and with his family to be able to bring more awareness and hopefully bring this young, this young man home. Um, the missing young man's name is Aiden Teague Dungan, and this is his story. Today, we're talking about Aiden T. Dungan. Aiden was born on January 22nd, 1996 to Lori and Sam Dungan. Um, Aiden also has a uh, brother named Lachlan. Aiden is a local boy born and raised on the island of Kauai. Um, if you're not familiar with the Hawaiian Islands, because I know I do have a lot of followers that are in the continental U.S., um, Aiden... Aiden's Island, where he was born and raised, Kauai, is on the far side of the Hawaiian Island chain. And, you know, that is where he's born and raised. So he is a local boy. He loves local boy things. Um, you know, Aiden's parents had expressed to me, Aiden's mom had expressed to me how much of a sweetheart Aiden is. He was just really, really sweet. Um... His parents joke that they never really had the opportunity to discipline him because um, Aiden was never naughty. And, you know, he was just an easygoing kid growing up and kind of just went with the flow. He was lax, kind of, you know, easygoing, went with the flow. Um, Aiden loved to surf. He learned how to surf when he was nine or ten years old. And... As many locals here in Hawaii, you're surrounded by ocean. So most people here will take up some form of surfing or water sport. Um, I did. And, you know, so it becomes a part of your lifestyle. It becomes your passion, things that you like, things that you utilize to get away from all the stresses that everyday life has to offer. And that was something that Aiden really enjoyed. He loved, loved to surf. Um, and he also loved to play the ukulele and, you know, for me, when I think of things like that and I think about my childhood, those are the things that I enjoyed. I loved to surf. I loved to play ukulele. Um, I love to do all of those kinds of things. So I think about, you know, what Aiden was like as a kid and he was your average local boy. You know, totally chill, just go with the flow of everyday life. Um, Aiden is a really good tennis player and he he's also very artistic. His mom had explained to me that when he was a kid, he was featured in the Kauai Electric Company um, calendar one year. Um, his artwork was featured. So I thought that was really cool. You know, it, an artist who loves to surf, loves to play ukulele, it seems like he kind of just was one of those kids growing up that loved doing a number of different things and he kept himself fairly busy. Um, Aiden also loved his dogs and he grew up with dogs. He had Milo, Nala, and Wheelie, which were his pals. Um, and he's a, he's an animal lover. He loved them. He was very close with his grandparents. And in general, they have a pretty close-knit family. They always keep in touch with each other. And, um, you know, Aiden, Aiden was just really close with his family members all around. They always, you know, spent a lot of time together and enjoyed each other's time together. Three weeks before Aiden's 18th birthday, he was diagnosed with a form of nonviolent mental illness. Um, and I want to stress nonviolent. 
a lot of times there is a stigma out there where people suffer from mental illness and because of that they're they're crazy um and that is not the case, right? Mental illness can be anything from a stress disorder. It can be depression. It can be a number of different things. And, you know, Aiden was diagnosed with a nonviolent type of mental illness. Um, his doctors prescribed him medication, which made Aiden feel out of sorts, um, so to say. He felt like he was a walking zombie and he did not like how it made him feel and because of that he he decided that he would start self-medicating himself and you know a number of different things had happened within that course of lifetime and you know over the years things have definitely had definitely you know changed um in late August, early September of 2019, Aiden was sent here to Maui from Kauai um, to go and stay at the Aloha House, which is a rehab type center here on island. Um, I'm not too sure how long he was there, but after spending his time there, he was released and then he was staying at a sober living facility that's located in Wailuku off, off of Waiehu Beach Road. Um, that sober living facility where he was staying will ultimately be one of the last places that he was seen since he had gone missing. Um, Aiden's mom, Lori, had come to visit him in September of 2019. And I'm sorry I keep looking down here because I have some notes here. I want to make sure that I'm getting them right. And she stayed here for about four days. Um, she stayed on island with him. During the first half of October 2019, Aiden drove a black moped with red trim. Um, license plate number is M O two one eight nine. Uh, and as much as he enjoyed his moped, he was having a hard time. Again, as I stated before in the beginning of the video, Aiden loved to surf. So he would pack his moped with his surfboard and drive from Waiehu or Wailuku where he was staying all the way to Ho'okipa. Now that's only like a 10-15 minute drive um, normally in a car but a lot of open field areas. It becomes very windy in that area because Ho'okipa is located on the north shore. So, you know, from personal experience, I can say that having to pack a surfboard, a boogie board, any of those things in a windy area um, on a moped is, it's not, it's not easy to do. Um, you basically become a riding kite the wind comes straight through the road and it'll either you know pick up the moped or motorcycle or bike whatever have you or it'll start shifting it so it it's a challenge to be able to do that and you know that he must have really enjoyed surfing if he did that consistently so you know because of that his mom his parents rather sent down his car and um, on November 1st, Aiden posted his moped for sale on Craigslist. And it was for sale for, it would be available on November 4th. So Aiden, Aiden received his car. About this, during the second half of October, beginning of November, Aiden drove around his 2006 um, Silver Scion XB. The car was later located at a private residence in Wailuku after he had gone missing. And I'll touch base on that in a little bit. Um, but he posted his moped for sale and it was supposed to be available for sale on November 4th. He posted that on November 1st for, for the moped. Um, on the day of November 7th, Aiden had lunch with a friend and he texted his dad at about 8.47 p.m. Um, telling him that he was going to go and get a haircut as well as 
um, to pick up his check. And that was essentially the last time anyone has heard from him or has seen him. Um, Aiden's mom and dad both called and texted and for a couple days, um, when they had called, it rang and then went to voicemail a couple days after he had gone missing. But about two days later, he or his phone, the calls just weren't going through anymore. They were just going essentially straight to voicemail and there was no voicemail. So it kind of gave them the impression like the phone was off or the battery had died or something along those lines because now they weren't able to get through at all all for them it was really really unusual because Aiden essentially told his dad that everything was fine and they had expected that they would be hearing from him and then they didn't um they they have not heard from him since and it was unusual since Aiden kept in contact with them consistently so you know when he didn't reach out to his parents they became really worried and he didn't reach out to his brother or anyone for that matter since and so therefore you know they went to father missing persons report um aiden's parents did talk to a friend or the friend that he had had lunch with the day the last day that he was seen she did state that aiden seemed a bit stressed but he didn't mention why he was um aiden's moped now, remember I had stated that it was posted for sale. Aiden's moped was picked up by three unknown males that were driving a pickup. Now, when they picked up his moped, they picked it up after he had already been missing. So it's not like, you know, he was there. Um, he had already been missing. No one knows who these men are. And to date, there still has been no transfer of title filed. Um, you know, so... We don't know what happened to the moped, where it went, who it could have gone to, any of those things. Um, on December 2019, Sam, who is Aiden's dad, flew to Maui to see if he can gather more information, um, kind of take a look at some things, ask questions, and essentially just look for his son. And it was days he was driving up and down different roads and so forth and he happened to drive down a road which was approximately two blocks from the sober living facility where Aiden was staying um and he came across Aiden's car so you know the scion that was located at the residence um Again, you know, he came across the car just as he was driving around. So it, it's weird because our streets here are in that general vicinity. A lot of them are just one-way roads. They lead all the way down to the ocean and then back up to the main road. Some of them just go straight to the ocean. So they're kind of like one-way roads there. There's no outlet. Um, in that that particular area so you know he's driving through that area essentially looking for his son and he comes across the scion and so he talks to the resident there and at first the resident had said the resident of the house had said that Aiden was staying there and then he left his car there but later he changed his story and said that he knew who Aiden was and he found Aiden's car at the beach. So he decided to bring it to his house for safekeeping. Um, there's a lot of different things that were stated um, where, you know, Aiden may have left the island or he went to Switzerland. Um, a number of different things, but Aiden didn't have a passport and obtaining that was near to impossible for him and while the airlines couldn't release that information to his parents there really was no record of him jumping on a flight to go anywhere out of state or off island um i'm sure the police will look into those things or see if he may have taken a flight out but 
you know, there's a lot of things that, um, you know, with TSA and everything like that, and that you need to have. And plane flights here in Hawaii, they're not cheap. A round trip flight to just the um, island over can be like two hundred dollars. Not so much now with COVID, but it's not affordable. So it's not like, you know, it would be something easily feasible for him to be able to do. I mean, financially, it was expensive to board a plane to, you know, catch a plane somewhere else. So. And that's something that you need to think about as well. Um, on top of that, interestingly enough, when Aiden's parents had obtained the car um, after grabbing it from the residence, they took notice at how immaculately clean the car was, which was really, really unusual. Um, Aiden's a bachelor and, you know, he's young. <laughs> So, you know, he kept all his stuff in his car. I mean, really, I don't know who doesn't do that. You know, they would keep their things in there. He may have had rubbish in his car left over. Like, a number of different things were there. And when they got the car, they noticed that none of those things were there. Um, none of those things were were in the car. Um it just, it lacked all personal sense of it belonging to Aiden, but it was very clean, um, which again was something very unusual, very out of the norm. And because of that, um, it worried them even more so. They've been working with, with different detectives, um, private detectives and so forth. Um, to help get as much information as they can since Aiden has gone missing. And there have been a number of possible sightings of Aiden throughout the island. But after following up on the leads and following up on the sightings, some of which actually contained video um, footage, they come to the conclusion that it was not him. So the family is still looking and searching and trying to find as much information as possible on this young man. Again, Aiden comes from a very close-knit family. The family members talk several times a week or they text back and forth. So, you know, at least every other day or so, they're in contact with one another. And nobody has heard from Aiden at all family's birthdays have come and gone holidays have come and gone and so you know it's it's really it's hard it's been over a year and they still don't have much information i'm gonna go ahead and share a few details um about aiden um so that you might be able to identify him if he happens to be on the street um, or so forth and you know that way you can go ahead and reach out to his family and let them know if you see them if you have seen Aiden um Aiden has dark blonde to light brown hair with blue eyes and when I say he has blue eyes if you see in his pictures they're piercing blue um very very difficult not to recognize they would stand out um when I look at his pictures I see a surfer boy. As I stated, I'm a local girl born and raised here. I spent a lot of time in the ocean. And so you can tell a boy who loves the water. You can tell someone who loves the water and you can see their skin tone. Um, they, there's a, almost a special kind of skin tone that you have when you're a water person, when you're a water lover. And Aiden has that local boy skin. Um, and you know, that that color you get from being out on the water surfing all day. But because of that, his blue eyes stand out dramatically. Um, so as I stated before, dark blonde to light brown hair with blue eyes. He's 5 feet 11 inches tall and weighs approximately 145 pounds. He has a few tattoos which include an infinity sign on his knuckle and a dollar sign. 
Um, he also has the words save water tattooed above his knee. He also has a scar on his right wrist from a glass cut. And Aiden smokes spirit blue. There is a $2,000 reward for information leading to Aiden Duggan. Again, Aiden was last heard from and last seen on November 7th of 2019. He was staying at a sober living facility located on Waiehu Beach Road on the island of Maui in Wailuku. Um, that was the last time he was heard of, the last time he was seen. They have not located his cell phone and it still hasn't been able to be contacted. Um, the phone goes to basically non-existent. Um, someone has to know what happened to Aiden. We live on an island or I live on an island, Maui, is it's small. It's a small island. We are a community based for the most part, but I'm not going to say that Maui doesn't have its dark sides. I would be lying if I said it didn't. Um, but at the same time, we are still so small and such a community based island or community based location that almost everybody come in contact with someone you know or may have known someone else and someone knows someone knows what happened to Aiden someone knows something about his disappearance and the family needs to know um I I could not imagine or fathom being in Sam Laurie or Lachlan's place right now during this time anytime not knowing where my child is and so i am reaching out to all of you guys to you know get awareness on this subject get awareness on aiden so that you can keep your eyes open for him or if you know someone who knows someone you know send them to the links that i'll be providing in the description box below um aiden it's Aiden's birthday and, you know, his family needs to know. Today is Aiden's 25th birthday. It's been two birthdays since Aiden went missing on November 7th, 2019. We're appealing to anybody who knows anything, who may have seen Aiden, who, know, who might know what happened to him, Please, please call us. Aiden, if you are seeing this, we just want to know that you're okay. We love you. We miss you so much. Please call us. Please call us if you can. We love you. Uh, my number is 808-652-3945. Sam's is 808-634-7882. And Kimberlin's is 808 808- 205-7758. Thank you. So I'm pleading with you guys. Um, definitely check out the Find Aiden Dungan Facebook page. I will leave the link down below as well as any contact information. If you have any information on Aiden, his whereabouts, or what could have happened to him. Um, there'll be information down below. The family is offering a $2,000 reward for information leading to Aiden and any information helps. If you think you may have seen him, take a picture and share it to the Facebook page or share it to the telephone numbers that you have. Um, but, you know, we live in the day and age now where everybody is, you know, in contact and we got everybody got cell phones so take that picture and get it out there um that is my video for today um happy happy birthday aiden my heart goes out to laurie sam lachlan and the rest of the duncan family and friends 
I really, really hope that we can get some kind of information to help, you know, in any way we can. Um, again, all the information will be posted down below. I hope you guys got some insight into this whole thing. And I want to thank you guys for joining me on one of my true crime videos once again. Definitely, if you have any questions, leave them down below. If you are interested in sharing any information, again, with regards to Aiden's disappearance, those will be listed in the description box down below. And if you would like me to take a look at a missing persons case, unsolved, anything, um, you can reach me on my social media or my email, um, which is also listed. Thanks so much for joining me, you guys. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and that notification button on your way out. And I'll talk to you in my next one. Don't forget to hit that like button on your way out too. Talk to you soon, guys.